magazines Diamond rings and beauty queens But nothing seems to sparkle like you do There's fine cigars and caviar Expensive cars and movie stars But everything I need is in this room Oh, and I've seen the lights From New York to Vegas And I've tasted wine From Venice to Paris And I've seen the sights Nothing comparing to you So I ain't looking over fences Trying to find a better view My search for all that ended When I first laid eyes on you And the grass is always greener Sunshines when you smile And when I'm holding you The world makes sense On my side of the fence mm -hmm. If I ever win the lottery It wouldn't mean a lot to me Cause I already got you Please be seated. 
Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the wedding ceremony of Patrick and Cara. We come together not to mark the start of a relationship, but to acknowledge and strengthen a bond that already exists. They welcome you, their closest friends and family members, not only to witness their commitment to each other, but also to wish them well and every happiness in their new life together. Marriage is a partnership of two unique people who bring out the very best in each other and who know that even though they are wonderful as individuals, they are even better together. Who brings Cara to be married to Patrick? Thank you. Please take a seat. This wedding is also a celebration of family. It is the blending of two families, the Saunters and the Moultons, separate up to this moment, but united from this day forward. To honour this and to show their love, respect and appreciation for their parents, Cara and Patrick wish to ask them for their blessing. Will Jennifer and Kenneth and Linda and James please stand? Jennifer and Kenneth, do you offer Cara and Patrick your blessing? Do you welcome Patrick as a member of your family and give him your love and respect? Linda and James, do you offer Cara and Patrick your blessing? Do you welcome Cara as a member of your family and give her your love and respect? Thank you. Please be seated. My name is Ruth Voisey. As a celebrant, I am duly authorised by law to solemnise marriages according to law. Patrick John Moulton and Cara Alice Sonter. Before you are joined in marriage in my presence and in the presence of these witnesses, I am to remind you of the solemn and binding nature of the relationship into which you are now about to enter. Marriage according to law in Australia is the union of two people to the exclusion of all others voluntarily entered into for life. I would now like to ask Patrick's cousins, Caden, Nathan and Jesse, to come and do their reading. In your eyes I have found my home. In your heart I have found my love. In your soul I have found my mate. With you I am whole, full and alive. You make me laugh, you let me cry. You are my breath, my every heartbeat. I am yours, you are mine. Of this we are certain. Well done. done. A successful marriage is not something that just happens. It takes work, it takes patience and it takes time. It takes a commitment from both of you, a commitment to do whatever it takes to make your relationship thrive and not just simply survive. True love does not have a happy ending. True love does not have an ending. Patrick, do you take Cara to be your wife, promising to love her, comfort, honour, respect and care for her for the rest of your life? I do. Cara, do you take Patrick to be your husband? Promising to love him, comfort, honour, respect and care for him for the rest of your life. I do. Patrick, please repeat after me. I call upon all persons here present to witness that I, Patrick, take you, Cara, to be my lawful wedded wife. Cara, I vow to love you unconditionally from this day until our last, and I will try in every way to be worthy of your love. I vow to be the best husband and father I can be. I vow to ride the highs and lows of life with you and to love you just as much on our tough days as I do on our good days. I vow to do everything in my power to make sure you are on time. (laughs) Every time. 
I'm obviously still working on that. <laughs> and I promise to let you choose what to watch on TV when there's no sport on. I would never have imagined that out of all the people in this world, I would find someone as special as you. You're my best friend, my soulmate, and my one true love. I vow to make you happy, to make you laugh, to cherish you, and to always be there for you. I promise to be your shoulder to cry on, your sidekick in life, your best friend, and your husband. Finally, I offer you myself. Cara, please repeat after me. I call upon all persons here present to witness that I, Cara, take you, Patrick, to be my lawful wedded husband. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Patrick, you came into my life right when I needed you the most. Since then, you have shown me a world of love I could never have imagined. Thank you for being the gentle and loving partner and father that you are. If I could have described the qualities of a perfect man to not only spend with life with, but create life with, before I met you, I would not have come at all close to describing the wonderful man that you are. Your kindness, humbleness, humbleness sincerity and patience make me feel safe and drive me to be a better person. I promise to continue to better myself for the rest of my life so that I may be the kind of wife that you deserve. I vow to bring joy to your days and warmth to your nights and to bring fun to the mundane and stability to times of uncertainty. I promise to be an unwavering support when you come to me in times of need and even more so to come to you when you are hurting in silence. I promise to complain only mildly about the cricket and mock only slightly when Souths get one over the dragons. <laughs> and I promise to leave the last chip on the plate and receive gratefully my morning cuppa, even when you make me tea instead of coffee. I promise to love your amazing family and forever show them how lucky I am to be part of their tribe. I will always appreciate the calm you bring to my life and to remain in awe of the man who helped me become a mother. You are my rock, my happy place and my balance and I promise to do all that I can to be those things for you too. For me, the road ahead is incredibly exciting because I know that I won't be walking it alone. Instead, I will be walking it with one of the world's finest gentlemen. With all my being, I love you and our little family and I can't wait to revel in a lifetime of happiness together. I'd like to ask Lauren to come up and do her reading. Hi. <laughs> to love is to not possess, to own or imprison, nor to lose oneself in another. Love is to join and separate, to walk alone and together, to find a laughing freedom that lonely isolation does not permit. It is finally to be able to be who we really are, no longer clinging in childish dependency, nor docilely living in separate lives in silence. It is to be perfectly oneself and perfectly join in permanent commitment to another and to one's inner self. Love only endures when it moves like waves, receding and returning gently or passionately or moving lovingly like the tide and the moon's own predictable harmony because finally, despite a child's scars or an adult's deepest wounds, they are openly free to be who they really are and always secretly were in the core of their very being, where true and lasting love can only abide. Could we have the rings, please? Thanks. We'll have, um, we'll have the little one first. We'll have Charlie's first. Patrick, as you place the ring on Kara's finger, please repeat after me. With this ring, I give you my heart. From this day forward, you shall not walk alone. My arms will be your shelter and my heart will be your home. Cara, 
as you place the ring on Patrick's finger, please repeat after me. Let this ring be a symbol of our love. May it represent our today, our tomorrows, our future and our past. As I have given you my hands to hold, so I give you my heart to keep. Anyone have any butter? It's all right. I'd like to ask Shikondi and Emily to come up the front and do their reading, please. These are the hands of your best friend, young and strong and full of love for you, that are holding yours on your wedding day as you promise to love each other today, tomorrow and forever. These are the hands that will work alongside yours as together you build your future. These are the hands that will passionately love you and cherish you through the years and with the slightest touch will comfort you like no other. These are the hands that will hold you when fear or grief fills your mind. These are the hands that will countless times wipe the tears from your eyes, tears of sorrow and tears of joy. These are the hands that will tenderly hold your children. These are the hands that will help you hold your family as one. These are the hands that will give you the strength when you need it. And lastly, these are the hands that even when wrinkled and age will still be reaching for yours still giving you the same unspoken tenderness, tenderness with just a touch. Just ask you two to hold hands, please. The question is asked, is there anything more beautiful in life than a young couple clasping hands and pure hearts in the path of marriage? Can there be anything more beautiful than young love? And the answer is yes. There is a more beautiful thing. It is the spectacle of an older man and an older woman finishing their journey together on that path. Their hands are gnarled but still clasped. Their faces are seamed but still radiant. Their hearts are physically tired but still strong with love and devotion. So yes, there is a more beautiful thing than young love. Old love. Something for you two to work towards. A good marriage must be created. In marriage, the little things are the big things. It is never being too old to hold hands. It is remembering to say, I love you, at least once a day. It is never going to sleep angry. It is standing together to face the world. It's having the capacity to forgive and forget. It is not only marrying the right person, it is being the right person. Patrick and Cara, you have just made a lifelong commitment to share the rest of your lives with each other. However, the journey is not yours alone, for you have your beautiful daughter, Indiana, and it is the strength of your love that will nourish you all together as a family. You are a family drawn together by love and held together by devotion. The rings you have exchanged in our presence have neither beginnings nor endings and are linked by love and the promises that you have made to each other. May this love which joins you today grow deeper and stronger as the years pass. We are all honoured to be present today on the occasion of your marriage and we wish you a long and happy life together. I now take great pleasure in declaring that you are husband and wife. Patrick, you may now kiss your bride. To conclude the ceremony, I invite Patrick, Cara and their witnesses to come and sign the register and marriage certificate. This horizon, it's shining, seems the daylight knows this is our time now.
Please now join me in congratulating our bride and groom as I introduce to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Moulton. So everyone, if I could please all get you to lift the spirits, we're going to start by introducing, coming in first, we have Mel and Shane. Coming in second to none is Rachel and Josh. We now have our maid of honour and best man, Greta and Ellis. Now the stars of the show, I'm sure they need no introduction, but I'll give one anyway. The fabulous Cara and Patrick. Ladies and gentlemen, Cara, Patrick and the Bridal Party. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Josh, sometimes affectionately known since the Bucks Party as the Adonis or Action Man. Tonight I'm your, I am your MC. Uh, I couldn't be more happier to be here in front of all of you. I am what is regarded as a show pony. So, <laughs> thank you so much for the honour, guys. Like, I, I couldn't think of anyone else better to talk about, other than myself. <laughs> guys, when um, Pat sent me a text uh, a little while back, and uh, I was out with a friend, um, one of my only other Ranger friends. Uh, I only have two, it's Pat. Anyway, I was out having a drink, uh, and as always, we had a few too many. Uh, and I get a text from Pat, and he just says, he's like, hey, mate, Cara and I have been thinking, and, you know, we couldn't think of anyone better to be an MC. Uh, you know, would you be okay? And I responded with, fuck yes. <laughs> I, of course, was about eight pints deep. Uh, didn't really know what an MC did. So anyway, the next day later, oh, sorry, uh, my partner, Claude, she then came to the pub, and she uh, said, oh, what's going on? I'm like, oh. I'm going to be Pat and Cara's MC. She's like, great. Do you know what that is? I'm like, no, not really, but how good is it? Anyway, Claude then starts to get a little bit nervous for me. So the next day I jump onto YouTube. I type in, what does an MC do? Uh, I, I've been to a few weddings. I knew they speak, but I didn't really know what they had to do. So I'm uh, going through, and I'm hearing these MCs talk about, oh, you know, you should know a lot about the bride and the groom. You know, you, you, you've got to be there. And if you're a friend of them, don't do it. I was like, what? They're like, no, no, you're going to be terrible. You're going to be terrible. You know, employ our services. The best gift you could give after being asked to be an MC is to not do it because you're shit. 
I'm like, great, all right, this YouTube guy's telling me not to be an MC. Fantastic. So I keep on watching and I finally come to the conclusion that all an MC needs to do is wear a bow tie. Um, and that's about it. So here we are today uh, down in Casarina, beautiful northern beaches of New South Wales, almost Queensland, where we're all from, uh, looking absolutely fabulous. Everyone here is looking great, I must say. So thank you all for putting on your best faces. Everyone appreciates it. Um, guys, as I said, the fire exits, uh, when you head outside, go to the right. Toilets, just through these doors, they will be closed all night, but you can push them open. You all know the location of the bar. Uh, it is right behind you. So if you need anything from there, please feel free. Um, what I'd like to talk about now very quickly before we get into um, the speeches is how I first met Pat and Cara. Uh, it was back in 2015, uh, Paddy and I were both in PT school and it was a little bit awkward when you first meet new people. Uh, I saw this ginger that had quite big biceps. Uh, I was impressed, obviously, um, by his biceps, but not by the gingerness. <laughs> but shortly after talking to him for not long, we both spoke fluent shit and we hit it off from there, so it was great. And. Uh, as we did, we ended up going out. I got to meet Kara, and boy, can I tell you what, she knows how to party. Kara <laughs> and Pat, absolute legends. Um, we won't go into our antics that we got up to in early 2015, but it has been great to see the evolution of how you guys have come from where you were when I first met you to where you are now. Owning a house, having a daughter, becoming absolutely in love, and here we are at this wedding. It is absolutely fantastic. So I would like to raise a glass, which I don't have, so it's just over here, <laughs> to Pat and Cara. May you guys forever be happy and continue the evolution of your beautiful relationship. That was awesome. Thanks, man. Now, this wouldn't be any wedding without a few honourable mentions. First goes to Sucky. Now for all of those that know Sucky, uh, and I had the honour of meeting him at the Bucks party, he is a, uh, a different man. And he... Wow. One, one story comes actually from the best man, Ellis, uh, at the airport. So we just spent a, uh, a great deal of hydration over the, a couple of days from about Friday afternoon through to Sunday morning. We've been hydrating quite well. And all the boys are ready to head back down south. They're at the airport. Sucky decides he's not feeling too well, so he might go eat a fruit salad for the first time. <laughs> After having his fruit salad, I think it might have been one piece, uh, he decided that he needed to go to the toilet and relieve himself via the mouth. From there, he didn't make the toilet. He only made it right in the middle of the airport and decided to relieve himself from the mouth, vomit everywhere all over the airport. In sheer disgust, he walked away. <laughs> Our second honourable mention goes to Sucky. <laughs> La yesterday, yesterday down at the, we, uh, a few of us met down at the pub and uh, we were talking to a few locals. And they said, are you guys a part of the Wollongong wedding? Right, yeah? How do you know about that? Oh, there was this guy that was in here that got kicked out a long time ago. He was telling us all about it. Little did we know that it's sucky. We start to kind of piece it together and we eventually found some, um, some Instagram videos of sucky and we went up to the locals. Is this this man? Oh, yeah, that's him. He got kicked out ages ago. <laughs> so, mate, it doesn't matter where you go, you leave an impression and everyone down in Casarina and Kingscliff know about the Wollongong wedding. So, you're all famous. The third honourable mention goes to Fruity. And this is from Cara. Fruity, you, are, you, mate, you have a, a really big set for showing up here, apparently. After some of the antics you've pulled over in the years. Uh, and yeah, so honourable mention, mate. Not too much there, but yeah. Apparently you're a changed man now. And our final honourable mention goes to Steve, who was able to make it here from the PGA with his green jacket.
He may have hit nine over and got plenty of bogeys, but mate, we are sure glad you could make it off the turf to get down here and celebrate this amazing wedding. <laughs> but without further ado, I would love to introduce the mother of the groom, Linda, to tell us some amazing words about Pat and Cara. Thank you, Josh. Oh no! Oh, she that saw her. That deteriorated her. pretty quick. She saw her. Oh, Indy Bear. I'm sorry. I can take off. Um, first of all, first of all, Jamie and I would like to start by welcoming you all and thank you for travelling to the beautiful north coast of New South Wales to celebrate the wedding of Cara and Pat. I think you can gauge how your kids have grown up by the friendships they've maintained. And as I look around the room tonight, I see many of you that we've known since you were in primary school and you still haven't grown up. <laughs> and couldn't be happier that you're all here tonight. I should probably mention Bo Chamberlain here as he would have been here with bells on if not for his work commitments at the Rugby World Cup in Japan. Cheers, Bo. We would also like very much at this stage to welcome Jenny, Brad, Jeff and Jamie and of course Cara to our immediate and extended families. Each time we've met Jenny, Brad and Jeff, we've realised that Pat has married into a very solid, dependable and loving family. And he, and we know he loves spending time with them as we do whenever we have the opportunity. The first time we met Cara, both Jamie and I felt it and knew it. We knew that this beautiful and wonderful young lady would be the love of our son's life. Hang on. <laughs> this was totally reinforced when Pat introduced Cara to my dad, Derek, who told him in no uncertain manner to put a ring on it. <laughs> he knew it straight away. And just like us, he was a good judge of character. Since then, we've watched and admired Cara and Pat work hard to establish a life together in Brisbane. They've rented and saved, and then they bought their own house prior to their arrival of the amazing Indiana. And our beautiful granddaughter has meant the world to all of us. Uh, let me see. All right. Pat and Cara are very, very special parents and have done such a brilliant job caring and loving Indiana. I doubt if there is anyone who's met Indy and not fallen immediate in love with her, and this is certainly true for all of House, Moulton, Mosdale and Paige. I'd like to finish by asking you all to raise a glass to our newlyweds, Cara and Pat. To Cara and Pat with love. Guys, how great was that? Linda did a fantastic job. Now, the man I'm about to uh, introduce and bring up, Cara's not actually seen this bloke without a beard her entire life. <laughs> and it is only until today that he's been clean shaven and does that clean shaven face look as smooth as a baby's bum. I'd now love to introduce Cara's dad, Brad, to say a few choice words. Good evening. Wonderful you could all attend tonight. So proud of these two kids. I do have just a small story I'd like to share with you. My daughter came to me one day here, a couple of years ago now I would think, and she said to me, she says, I've got this boyfriend, Pat, and I'd met him, and she says he's keen on marrying me. Anyway, a little later, this man came to me and he actually asked me. He said, can I have your hand, your daughter's hand in marriage? That's old school, as am I. I was pretty touched. 
I didn't really expect it to happen, but went a long way for me. And I thought, yeah, nah, I like that. Anyway, an hour or so later, Cara came over to the shed and she says, what's going on, Dad? I says, that Pat fella you're playing with, I said, he's, he's, he's come and asked me for your hand in marriage. <laughs> I says... I says, he, he's asked for your hand in marriage. And she sort of looked at me and she's grinning and waiting and waiting and waiting. And she says, well, what did you say? I told him I'd think about it. <laughs> and she belted me. <laughs> anyway, I, 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 well, obviously I've given my approval and couldn't be happier to do that. Anyway, it was only a few weeks later they came for another visit. Anyway, I said to Pat, I said, come on, we'll jump in the ute, mate, and we'll go for a trip to town. So, all right, we jumped in the old four-wheel drive, and there is a back way to Gympie. Um, and the tar road ran out, and he's sort of looking at me, and he knows full well this is not the way to Gympie. <laughs> and a little bit further on, and mobile phone reception deteriorated somewhat, and he started to pale. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, after we did eventually get into town and you know, we did what we had to do and we got home and I reassured him when we got back that the shotgun was not loaded. No. Just at short, and I didn't want to embarrass the man too much because it did mean a lot to me that he actually came and asked for Cara's hand in marriage and that, that touched me greatly and... Jen and I, we are so proud to have Pat as a member of our family, small as such as it is. So now we're, well, I suppose we're almost Moltons, aren't we? <laughs> and there's a heap of yous. Congratulations, kids. I wish yous all the love in the world. Care of a buddy. So to Brad's surprise, uh, Kara is now going to ask Brad for a father-daughter dance.
Guys, Channel 7 just called and uh, Dancing of the Stars are wanting you to come on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we now have the mains about to come out. Uh, and as they are coming out, I'd just like to tell you a little story uh, about Pat and his daughter uh, after that lovely father-daughter dance. So during labour, Cara, it, it went on for a while and everyone was excited about Indy coming along. And... Kara being in a lot of pain from labour, I don't pretend to understand or know, but in a lot of, pa uh, a lot of pain, uh, required an epidural. And the nurse has then gone on to Pat and asked, can you please assist with this? It'll be a special moment. Uh, it's the last time you ever get to cause your wife any pain. So Pat's gone to uh, assist the nurse and, like all strong men, has then beginning to faint and feel sick. And he nearly passed out. So in any good Patrick way, he's decided the best help I'm going to be to everyone here is if I duck across the road and go to the gym and get in a workout. <laughs> so, mate, like, that's it. <laughs> so, mate, I can't wait for you to tell that story at, uh, at Indy's wedding. It'll be great. Uh, and she'll know she means a lot to her, uh, just like your gains do. Mate, it's very important. But ladies and gentlemen, please feel free to get around, have a chat to everyone now. Mains are on their way out uh, and we will continue with the speeches after everyone gets a good feed into them. So enjoy until then. So I'd now like to introduce our best man for his speech, Ellis. Uh, I hear he's absolutely packing it, guys. So can we get a bit more of a round of applause? Give him a bit of encouragement. Settle down, mate. <laughs> no heckling. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm reading off a script here, so bear with me. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So good evening, everybody. On behalf of Patty and Cara and the bridesmaids, the groomsmen, I'd like to thank you all for coming today to share on this special occasion. I know a few people who have travelled some distance to be here today. In my eyes, that makes it even more special. Those who don't know me, my name is Ellis, and after 13 or so years of torture, mainly for Paddy, he's asked me to be his best man. I'm not really the public speaker kind of guy either. Actually, the only kind of public speaking I've done is down Shalaba Pub on a Sunday night for karaoke after one or two sneaky schooners. So you have to bear with me. So before I get going, I just want to point out, and I'm sure everyone will agree, doesn't Cara and the bridesmaids look absolutely stunning on this special day? <laughs> And I'd also like to thank both Paddy's parents, Jamie and Linda, and Cara's parents, Jenny and Brad, and their extended families on this special occasion, as without them, without them this day would not have been possible. <clears throat> so make sure, make sure you enjoy a few beverages tonight, catch up with family and friends, and get up on the dance floor later, because I'm certain there's... There's nothing more that would make Patty and Cara happier tonight than see everyone in the room up dancing and enjoying themselves. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the day so far, and I'd just like to say to Patty, you're a lucky man you found a girl like Cara. She is beautiful, smart, funny, loving, caring. She deserves a great husband. Thank God you married her before she found one. <laughs> That's the only joke. <laughs> Not funny. Okay, so all jokes aside, it was a great honour to be asked by Paddy to be a part of his special day. Over the years, and even though I'm a few years older, I've looked up to Paddy and respected everything that he represents. And that comes down to his upbringing. So to Jamie and Linda, I thank you for bringing up one of the most smartest and definitely one of the most respectful blokes I've ever met or known. He's a true gentleman. <clears throat> I'm proud to call Paddy just, uh, not just a lifetime friend, but a brother for life. All right. All right. So some of you also would know we play plenty of cricket together. Endless summer Saturday afternoons, sledging 14-year-olds and making us feel better about ourselves. <laughs> but on this particular Saturday afternoon, it means so much more, and we can finally say that Paddy has played the perfect innings. 
and his partnership will be forever not out. Heck, you even got Cara to wear a white today. <laughs> but I would now take this opportunity to congratulate the happy couple and anyone who's been lucky enough to spend time in their company know what a great couple they really are and the smiles they put on people's faces around them. So ladies and gentlemen, if, excuse me, immense pleasure, not to mention relief, as I'd like to raise a toast to the newlywed couple. So if you raise your glasses, to Mr. and Mrs. Molden. To... Thank you. <laughs> That's it. Some fine words from a not so fine man, but a best man. I'd now like to uh, introduce up Greta, the maid of honour, and she has done a fantabulous job today. I don't know what that word was, sorry. Fantastic job today uh, with everything from indie, like your control and all of that. Just Cara, I mean, you would agree, but Greta, I'll leave it up to you. So everyone, welcome Greta. Okay, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Greta and I'm Cara's maid of honour and best mate. Can we just take a minute to appreciate the space that we're in tonight because Cara has thrown her entire being into tonight and it looks spectacular. Well done, mate. <laughs> and also thank you, Patty and Cara, for including me in today. It's, um, it's been amazing and it's a day that I definitely will never forget. Okay, so... I've known Cara for many years. My first memory of Cara was um, versing her on the netball courts of Gympie during our school days. I would never ad have admitted it at the time, but she always was and always has been a much better netball player than me. And her gorgeous hair, that was always longer than mine, really grated on me too. She would always stride over with a big smile after her team smashed mine and extend her hand with a big good game handshake. Turns out she was a better sport than me too. <laughs> Luckily for me, enduring Kara turned into loving her pretty quickly. And I'm not sure where I'd be without her, <clears throat> as I'm sure is the case for a lot of people in this room here tonight. Kara has been a significant part of my life and I'm proud to call her one of my dearest friends. <clears throat> Kara is a person I can turn to for absolutely anything and I share a love and a bond with Kara that normally only exists between family members so I guess that makes us sisters by choice. <laughs> Before I start, I firmly believe that the future cannot be appreciated without acknowledging the past and with the permission I've obtained from Patty and Kara. I would like to acknowledge just how far you, Kara, have come within yourself. Those closest to Kara will know what I'm referring to and words cannot express how proud I am of you and how grateful I am that you found your self-worth. You've, be you've become an incredibly resilient person yet managed to maintain your softness, kindness, sincerity and beautiful nature that you have always possessed. I see the mother you are to Indy, and I see the way you look at Pat. And it's so comforting to know that you have found this amazing man beside you. Pat nourishes the best qualities of you so that you can shine and love others as well as yourself the way that you should and you deserve. <clears throat> I know you, your parents, and maybe even Jamie might think I'm mad for saying this, but I'm glad you've endured what you have because without that time in your life, I'm sure you wouldn't have the appreciation for the man beside you today. I know I sure wouldn't. With that being said, it is my mammoth duty tonight to pay tribute to Kara's single life. <laughs> or mourn it, as the case may be. 
I've witnessed Cara grow from the woman, wife and mother she is before you today. And the emotion I feel within me is immense. At times, I've been overwhelmed with pride and at other times, I've genuinely wanted to slap sense into the girl. (laughs) But nevertheless, despite me warning her about married life, here we are today. (laughs) Sorry, honey. (laughs) (sighs) Cara, we have experienced the most extraordinary single lives together. And as hard as it is, it is time for us to hang up our heels. Cara, while sweet, beautiful and well-mannered, is the tequila shot to any night out. (laughs) And you haven't lived until you've witnessed this girl smash a beer bong in true gimpy style. (laughs) Cara, we've travelled to the other side of the world together, danced on podiums together, poured bottles of vodka all over ourselves in the middle of Cancun together, (laughs) danced to the beating drums that covered us in fluoro paint, we've skinny dipped in the ocean, ended up in emergency rooms together, got kicked out of clubs together, laughed together, cried together, graduated uni together, accomplished milestones together, been there for each other and the rest of our girls, at the drop of a hat, to party hard or empty a box of Kleenex. It's been amazing. To be honest, I really only have myself to blame for losing my sidekick. You see, Patty lived with my husband Joe and I before love ignited between Patty and Cara. I recall Joe, Cara and I were attending Sarah's birthday party and as Patty was the new man in town, I decided to bring him along. Nothing like fresh meat to the table, hey ladies. But, to be fair, as a New South Wales supporter, he needed all the help he could get. (laughs) (laughs) That night, I decided to play Cupid with Patty and Cara. You see, I had told her about the most amazing guy. He was funny, attractive, athletic, the entire package. And I don't actually know what happened to that guy, Cara, but Patty's going to have to do. (laughs) It's fair to say, Indy, you're alive because of me and maybe some timely swooning by Daddy. But let me tell you a story about the moment I knew Mummy didn't need me, your crazy auntie, anymore. We arrived at Sarah's party and I sat Patty right next to Cara and dropped Sydney as their common denominator. From there it was easy. I let chemistry take care of the rest. Of course, I periodically checked in with Cara throughout the night, only to see she was having the best time with Patty. Up until the final hour, (laughs) roughly 2am, or the critical stage, as most bachelors would refer to it as, I can still picture it, Patty, in peak performance, making that critical error in judgement. You see, guys... (laughs) (laughs) You see, guys, agreeing with everything a woman says isn't always the key. In fact, it's a trap for young players. I see all you younger guys looking confused. However, all the married men here tonight know exactly where I'm going with this. Right, honey? You see, our friend Maddie was dancing nearby. And for those who don't know Maddie, Maddie is a 20 out of 10 and can give Miranda Kerr a run for her money. She is stunning. Now, it was clear to me, Cara's personal hovering bodyguard, that Patty had no interest in anyone else but Cara, regardless. I was there to witness Patty make that critical error. (laughs) Cara, while deep in conversation with Pat, looking deeply into his eyes, made reference to how gorgeous Maddie was. And Patty, (laughs) Patty, Patty, Patty. (laughs) Patty agreed with Cara. (laughs) And bam, Patty copped it, severely. And that was it. My newly empowered girl turned on her heels, marched directly from Patty straight to me and immediately told me what had happened and how how proud of herself she was and how much of a dick Patty was. (laughs) She was so proud for, quote, not copying that shit from, quote, some guy she had just met. 
My girl was very aware of her self-worth that night. Perhaps a little too aware. Needless to say, Patty's chances that night ended there and then. And I heard about how much of a jerk Patty was for the rest of, night, rest of the night. And while I never offer up to my friends anything less than a decent, background-checked man, I couldn't help feel but extremely impressed by the fire and sass my girl had found within her, even if it was the biggest overreaction of all time. <laughs> the next morning, I woke up and got myself ready to attend the recovery breakfast with my husband, Joe. I walked out to the lounge room to find Patty sitting on the couch looking sheepish, not quite knowing what I was going to say after he clearly offended my best friend. I laughed at him, extended the invitation to breakfast where Kara was most certainly going to be. God, no, it's safer here, was his response. <laughs> I worked on Kara and helped her dial down her newly found sass and got her to see the brilliant man and groom before you today. Patty, as I handpicked you myself, I know that you will take the very best care of my girl, just like you have done this entire time. You are an incredible devoted father to Indy and an absolute gentleman. And I'm so proud to call you my dear friend. I love you both so, so much, and I wish you every happiness in the world for the many years to come. To Mr. and Mrs. Moulton. I'm done, I'm out, I'm getting drunk, here you go. <laughs> Amazing speech, Greta. Uh, very good to hear. Patty, didn't realise about you, mate. Putting your foot in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, with the bride and groom's permission, uh, I'm actually going to fill you in on their first date. We've just heard about how they first met, so we're now going to fill in on their first date. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut straight to the chase. Is this mic working probably? Yeah. So I'm going to cut straight to the... Might be, might be the battery. It's just getting a bit choked up. <laughs> so, cutting straight to the chase. Uh, it was getting later on in the night after their first date. They're out having drink. So they're getting... Uh, cutting on to the, to the chase. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's getting later on in the night. They're starting to enjoy themselves. Uh, and they head off to a bar of Kara's choosing. I'm only holding this up here because it's still recording. So uh, they head off to a bar, and this bar happens to be one of where uh, generally people that bat on the same sex go. So it was a gay bar. <laughs> Obviously, Kara going there for immense safety, and Pat there, of course, the way he's looking today, was being hit on left, right, and centre. <laughs> a number of advances by different men coming towards Pat, offering drinks and other assortments of pleasure. <laughs> and it wasn't until too long that Pat got sick of this and he decided there is only one way that I am able to show everyone here that I am, that I am not sorry, batting for your team, and gentlemen, I am sadly out of the race. He buried himself within Kara's breasts just to show them. He's like, sorry guys, I'm out. And he motivated for days to come. And that is the story of Pat and Kara's first date. Uh, just as we get the mics uh, going, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're actually going to break up the speeches and we're going to have a little bit of trivia because I know there are a few sporting fans here. So the way this is going to work, uh, and as that mic gets ready, everyone's going to be standing up. Now, I'm going to give everyone uh, a question, and it will be followed by two answers. All I'm going to ask is that you place your hands on your head or your hips, depending on which question you think that will be. <laughs> Lovely. All right. So, perfect. We can hear me. Don't have to yell. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, first question. What is the team name of the Canterbury Bankstown? Is it Heads, Bulldogs, or Hips? Tigers. <laughs> 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 
The answer is heads. Any hips, please sit down. Good. Question two. In what year did Pat move to Queensland? Is it heads, 15, or hips, 14? Heads, 15, hips, 14. <laughs> the answer is hips, or heads, please sit down. Question three. What Australian movie includes the phrase, tell him he's dreaming, and no, it wasn't Cara's dad when Pat asked permission to marry him. Was it Heads, The Castle, or Hips, Muriel's Wedding? Tell him he's dreaming. The answer is Heads. All Hips, please sit down. Ah, oh, it was an easy one. Perfect. All right, question four. In what year did Kara move to Queensland? Heads, 14. Hips, 15. Oh, sorry, Brisbane, Brisbane. Sorry, my God. Brisbane, Brisbane. Brisbane. Heads, 14. Hips, 15. Heads, 14. Hips, 15. The answer is hips. Very good. Here we go. We get... <laughs> All right, guys. So now the answers are going to get a little bit harder. Which of these batsmen is the only one who was born in New South Wales and began his career in New South Wales domestic cricket? Is it heads, Ricky Ponting? Or hips, Gregory Mayo? <laughs> Heads, Ricky Ponting. Hips, Gregory Mayo. The answer is hips. Now, guys, I've only got 10 questions, so make sure you all end up failing. <laughs> Question eight. This is a little bit of a doozy because there's uh, not too many Queenslanders up here. What AFL team did not make this year's finals? Was it heads, Fitzroy Lions, or hips? Essendon Bombers. <laughs> yeah. Heads, Fitzroy Lions, or hips, Essendon Bombers? That was a trick question. There are no Fitzroy Lions. It's the Brisbane Lions. The answer is hips. It's the Brisbane, Be Brisbane Lions. So who we got go? Who we got left standing? Four, five? All right. Question nine. Goal kicking extraordinaire Jason Taylor made his first grade debut with which club? Heads, Sydney Roosters. Hips, Western Suburbs Magpies. Are you guys just all watching Ellis? <laughs> the answer's hips. So just keep standing. All right, last question. Last question. Glenn McGrath has terrorised many sides, especially the English, which, well, sorry, with his bowling skills. But how many one-day international runs did Glenn McGrath score against England in his career? Hips, sorry, heads, 14. Hips, 15. You can both sit down, it was 15. Glenn McGrath only scored 15 runs against England in his one-day international career. Oh, whoa, whoa. Out of nowhere, the dark horse. Stop it. All right, mate. I'm going to shout you a beer. I'm going to shout you a beer. Just go to the bar. Good work. All righty, guys. Great work on the trivia. I hope you enjoyed that. Alrighty guys, now I would love to introduce the man of the hour,
Pat Moulton. He's going to say a few words and thank everyone for being here. So, guys, give it up for Pat. That's fine. Uh, before I like to start, I'd just like to say that Greta and Brad, you basically stole half my speech already <laughs> with your stories. Uh, but I'll soldier on and see how I can go here with with that in mind. <laughs> yeah, you've got a wing it, haven't you? <laughs> we'll see how I go then, eh? <laughs> um, first of all, I'd just like to thank everyone for being here. Um, a lot of you have travelled a considerable distance. Um, you've all taken time out of your life, whether that been taking time off work, um, costs for flights, um, travel accommodation. So thank you very much. It doesn't go unnoticed. Um, this day wouldn't be the same without each and every one of you in the room now. Um, to the lovely staff at Osteria, Thanks for making this um, so as, as perfect as possible. It's been a great day. We couldn't have wished for anything, uh, anything better. Um, and we can't wait for the rest of the night to see how it pans out as well. Um, to Sarah Archer, thank you for the music you've been playing. Um, you're one seriously talented musician and I recommend you to anyone, anyone that needs to get married. Yeah, Sarah Archer, um, Instagram or Facebook, um, <laughs> just look it up, <laughs> um, and I can't wait to, um, she obviously, she turns into a DJ as well, so, you know, the night's going to get pumping, pretty much all the, once these formalities are done, so, can't wait for that as well, thank you. Um, to our wonderful photographers and videographers, um, thanks for your efforts today, I know it's a long day for each and every one of you, um, can't wait to see how all the photos and videos turn out. Um, I know we got some pretty good shots there with the sunset and everything and, and all the guys getting ready um, and all the girls getting ready, obviously, on their behalf. Um, yeah, they're going to look awesome, so thank you. Um, uh, to our MC, Josh, or as you said, the Adonis action man. <laughs> mate, you're an absolute legend. Thanks for, thanks for doing this, mate. We, we, as you said, we sprung it out yeah, pretty pretty late notice and as you said, your answer was... Fuck yes. <laughs> um, we actually stuffed up. We had you over at ours and we were meant to ask you in person. And, you, and like literally two minutes after you left, shit, we forgot to ask you. <laughs> so we sent you a message a couple of days later and, no, nah, mate, thanks heaps. Like, we could pay people big money for this and they wouldn't do half the job you've done today. So thank you. Yeah, he's not mortal, he's a god. <laughs> uh, to the bridesmaids, you all look seriously amazing. Um, Greta, Rochelle, Mel, you've all been a massive part of Cara's life um, and her journey up until this point. Thanks for all your help leading up to today as well. I know Cara values it more than anything. Um, I know how much Cara values each of your friendships and I know obviously how much you value hers in return. Um, I hope you've had a great day. I hope you enjoy the rest of your night as well. Um, special mention to you, Greta. Uh, if anyone didn't know, Greta's first wedding anniversary tomorrow. Yeah. The lovely Joe. Yeah. So, yeah, and Joe, of course. Yeah, yeah actually, uh, new, the new in laws on Tuesday, is it, as well? Yeah, so a round of applause there, please. So, 31 years and counting. So, yeah, I only found that out today, but yeah, that's pretty special. We all get to set, uh, spend the same sort of week celebrating, so that's awesome. Um, to the groomsmen, thanks for sharing today with uh, Cara and myself, uh, Ellis, Josh and Shane. Um, you've all had a massive impact in my life in one way or another, um, and the fact that I can actually call you mates is um, one of my proudest achievements in life, so thank you. Uh, as Mum mentioned earlier as well, I'd also make, like to make special mention to Bo Chamberlain who couldn't be here. Um, he would have loved to have been here, he would have been up here spending the day with me as well. Um, but unfortunately he couldn't be here due to work commitments, so I'd like to make special mention of that. Um, to, I've just mentioned Josh, but to Josh, um, someone asked me a couple of weeks ago, um, which one of you actually is the older brother? I think that's a pretty fair question, to be honest with you. If anyone knows 
me and Josh, we pretty much chalk and cheese. Um, no, but in all serious though, mate, um, even though you're like a thousand times more immature than me, <laughs> and you always will be, <laughs> um, you'll always be my big brother, and I've always looked up to you, and I'll still continue to look up to you as well. Uh, you're always pretty proud of all the sporting achievements that I've done, I, I done as a kid, uh, making rep sides and everything. I'm pretty sure that was only, cause you, only because you got to flog all my rep training singlets and shorts and everything, and you're pretty fond of that, so you can bring them back to me whenever you're ready as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you don't live too far away from me, so bring them back whenever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, one one um, special mention I'd like to um, bring up about me and Josh growing up together was when we were a bit older, um, and I'm sure Dad, you'll agree here, was when we both got to make our first grade debuts at Shell Harbour together, mm. playing footy. Um, we were playing out at Dapdo, mm. and they, they had a pretty decent side, a few former NRL players floating around, and you know, they were pretty, pretty tough to beat. We, we were pretty depleted. Um, had a few players out injured and suspended and whatnot, and that's pretty much the only reason me and Josh got the call up. Um, we, um, Josh ended up scoring a try. Um, I ended up booting a few goals from, from the sideline, and I think we ended up putting about 50 on them and won, won pretty easily. So that, that was a pretty special day. Um, lastly, thanks for being a great uncle to Indy. Um, she, yeah, she adores you. Her eyes light up whenever she sees you. And I can see the special bond you have, have with her. So, Cara and I are both extremely grateful for that too. Uh, to Lauren. Uh, I'm proud of the young woman you have become. <laughs> In my mind, you'll always be my little sister, um, despite the strong, independent woman you've grown into. Um, this is probably because since you've been about 20, we've actually never lived in the same state, suburb, country. Like, you've, you just went travelling and, yeah, we've never been in the same house since, I don't think, so, <laughs> bar maybe a night here or there, so. Um, no, you've, you've grown up massively in the last few years and I'm extremely proud of the woman you've become. I'm ex extremely proud of the man you're with. Um, Obviously, you can't be here tonight due to um, a few illnesses. Um, but, yeah, Cara and I are both very proud of you and Jaden. Uh, to Mum and Dad, uh, to put it simply, I wouldn't be the man I am today without you. Uh, you gave all three of us kids a great childhood, you're always heavily involved in everything we did, which is mainly sport. <laughs> um, I still remember mum and dad coaching my soccer team when I was maybe what, seven or eight years old. Um, both of them worked full time. Both just loved doing it. Poor old Lauren would get dragged around everywhere in those days. Didn't have a choice. Um, but they always even involved her. We'd play games and whenever the ball went out, Lauren would get to throw the ball in which would lead to about 15 boys going crazy and shouting out, Lauren, throw it to me, Lauren, throw it to me, Lauren. <laughs> I think she, she enjoyed that. I think she thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not until you get a bit older that you realise the, sac the sacrifices your parents make when you're growing up. Um, obviously, yeah, the sporting theme will continue here, but most Saturdays in winter would consist of me and Josh playing footy somewhere um, and Lauren playing netball. Yeah, you know, but bear in mind that Josh could have been down at Boatons Bay, I could have been at Helensburg and Lauren would be at Berkeley for netball. Um, and more often than not, somehow they'd managed to, to get to all three games there. Um, I don't know how you did it sometimes, but thank you. Uh, these days, obviously, with the distance between us, there's a lot more phone calls, though. We don't get to see each other, so... Um, and the dialogue couldn't be more different between me and mum and me and dad. <laughs> a typical phone call, 
Yeah, I have to double check if it's Darren Lockyer or not first, but. <laughs> <laughs> a typical phone call with mum usually consists of, me to, of her telling me how Ali and the boys are doing, or Lauren and Jaden, or Josh and Tex, <laughs> or, how Indi or asking how India's been. We usually chat for about 20, 20 minutes or so about family. Typical phone call with Dad usually consists of, mate, what about that third test? How'd we lose that? <laughs> or how bad were those bloody dragons last night? <laughs> That's pretty much my life in a nutshell, though, family and sport. Um, Mum and Dad, thanks for raising me the right way, for teaching me right from wrong, for believing in me, for the sacrifices you made, for providing Josh, Lauren and I with the best possible life you could. You've moulded me into the man I am today. Above all, thank you for showing me the importance of family. I knew from a very young age how important family was to you both, and I know you both got that trait from your parents, who unfortunately are no longer with us today. It's definitely a trait that I've carried on through, first of all, Ali and the boys, and now with Cara and Indy, my own family. I know how proud, of you, uh, how proud both of you are of me today and how proud you are of the man, father and now husband I have become. I love you both so much and I hope I can continue to make you proud into the future. Uh, to my new mother and father-in-law, Brad and Jenny. Uh, from the first time I had the chance to meet you both, you've been nothing but warm, accommodating and accepting. See, this is the part where I was going to mention the shotgun sh story. <laughs> You've already mentioned that, so that's just taken about two minutes off my speech there. <laughs> so I'll skip over that one. Um, Brad, I love going up to your place, sitting in the shed, listening to the footy over a, over a couple of beers. Although I think it's probably time we took Jamie's shrine down. <laughs> well, I guess, as everyone's a witness here, Jamie's here, he's alive in the flesh. <laughs> He's just working on the other side of the country. He's not dead. <laughs> he's missed, but he's not dead. <laughs> um, thank you for bringing Cara up and raising her into the woman she has become today. Um, I've actually never been so nervous as the time I had to ask you for your hand in, oh, for your permission for Cara's hand in marriage. Not your hand in marriage. <laughs> um, thanks for saying yes. Um, I promise she'll always be in loving, safe hands and always be treated with the love and the devotion that she deserves. Uh, Jen, I see so much of your traits and personality in Cara. Thank you also for raising Cara and moulding her into the woman she's become today. Thank you for everything you've done for us and continue to do for us. Thank you for being the best nanny to Indy, for dropping everything and helping out when she's sick and we can't afford to take time off work. Thank you for your selflessness. You put everyone else first every time and that's definitely something you've passed on to Cara as well. Thank you for always welcoming, welcoming me into your home and into your family. I've always felt love from you both from the first time Cara and I started dating. I love you both and thank you for accepting me as part of your family with open arms. To our beautiful daughter, Indiana. <laughs> nah, that's all right. It's probably good because I'll probably lose it if she does. <laughs> uh, I never thought I would have ever loved anyone as much as I love your mother. That was until you entered this world. The day you were born, I fell instantly in love with you. <laughs> and my life changed forever. Your bubbly, happy, infectious, and at times crazy personality light up our life. You drive us crazy at times, but even after you've had a tantrum or kept it kept both of us up until 2am. Yeah, parenthood's pretty cool, just, just quietly. <laughs> um, your mother and I will often look down at you while you sleep with an overriding sense of love and happiness 
and, how, and wonder how we created something so beautiful. We can't wait to see you continue to learn and grow into the confident and beautiful young lady I'm sure you will one day become. You are my greatest achievement in life and I'll always be there to guide you through every step of the way. Uh, to my stunning wife, Cara. <laughs> Feels pretty good to call you that, just quietly. <laughs> uh, darling, you look so beautiful today. You really do. Um, before I start to tell you how much you mean to me, though, I thought I'd give everyone here a bit of a timeline of uh, mine and Cara's relationship up until this point. Um, Greta's pretty much already touch on that first night, but um, yeah, I guess it started nearly five years ago without either of us actually knowing it. Um, I got offered a job up in Brisbane, I was umming and ahhing about it. Um, I had nothing holding me back down home, obviously I was single, I thought, no, what's the worst that can happen if I don't like it, I can always just move back home. Um, obviously it's the best move I've ever, I've ever done. Um, so I made the move from Shell to Brisbane, moved into the share house, so it happened just to Joe. Um, then I met Greta pretty, pretty much on the first night, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was there for about a month. There was about a month or so I was there, and then uh, Greta invited me along to uh, Sarah's birthday. So, Sarah, thank you. You're always going to med- mention there. Still waiting for <laughs> You'll be waiting a while. <laughs> um, yeah, I, st- I still remember Greta asking me, actually. She's like, oh, we're all going out tonight for Sarah, one of my friend's birthdays. I was sort of doing the polite thing and said, ah, nah, it's all good. I don't want to be the third wheel with you and Joe. It's all, nah, don't worry about it. You just go out. Um, it was then that she mentioned that she had some single. And I think I was dressed ready to go before she even said friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, was, so I was tagged along and once we got to the restaurant, as Greta said, I was strategically placed next to Cara. Fancy that. <laughs> Um, I felt a connection straight away. I'm sure the fact that Joey told a little white lie that I used to play for South, <laughs> Cara's favourite footy team, helped the connection between us. <laughs> Somehow she believed it. I've got no idea how. <laughs> I think I said under 20s, though. Like, you know, made it believable. Um, yeah, obviously, we enjoyed that night together, or well, most of it, up until, um, as Greta's pretty aptly described already, exactly what happened. To this day, though, I swear black and blue. My car, I thought I was keen on Maddie. I swear black and blue, I wasn't. And if this isn't evidence, then I don't, I don't know what is. <laughs> uh, I left it a couple of weeks um, and just sent, sent her a message. You know, a couple of weeks just to see if she's still on speaking terms. <laughs> see how she was doing. Uh, we started chatting and things progressed and we agreed to catch up for a coffee. No alcohol involved this time. <laughs> um, we caught up for a coffee. We were there for about four hours. So we, I think things progressed pretty well that day. Uh, we caught up a couple more times before I headed back home to see the family for Christmas. Um, and it was at that time that I'd already told my family about a girl on the scene called Cara. We started dating not long after that with Cara driving down from Gympie to Brisbane after work every Friday for a couple of months so we could spend the weekends together. Uh, Cara then showed a fair bit of commitment to the relationship when she found a job in Brisbane, quit a job in, Bris- in, in Gympie and moved down. She moved into the share house where we played Happy Family with Joe and Greta. <laughs> Things moved pretty quickly after, for, that, for us after that though. Uh, we moved, moved into a unit together, then progressed into a townhouse and had our first real commit- commitment together. Two dogs. <laughs> After about two and a half years together, we bought a house, which we've turned into a home, decided, decided to start a family, and I popped the question atop the story bridge. Thank God I didn't drop the ring. Um, all of this happened in, within about three months, so yeah, as I said, things were moving pretty quickly. Um, one of the more special moments I've shared with Cara involves all, all of our parents. Uh, my parents were coming up to stay for a weekend, and at this stage, Cara was about 11 weeks pregnant with Indy. Uh, we'd organised a catch up with Cara's parents for breakfast on the sunny coast. It was a wet, miserable, windy Sunday morning. 
And I'm pretty sure Jen was messaging Cara during the morning saying, look, don't worry about it, it's too wet. We'll just catch up next time. Jamie and, and Linda are up. Yeah, Cara was having none of that. <laughs> this, is, this was literally the only time we could tell all four is at once. <laughs> uh, once we got there, Cara and I said we left something in the car. We came back. I said, we got a present for all of you. Um, I didn't even say anything and I just put the ultrasound on the table. Um, and to see the joy in all your faces and to share that moment with all of you at once, um, yeah, that was priceless. Um, and then about seven months later, India, India arrived and our lives changed forever, all of ours. Uh, Cara, you're an absolutely amazing mother. You go above and beyond to ensure that Indy has the best life possible. I know how much you love our little girl and I can see how much she loves you. I'm so proud of the mother that you have become and the partner you've always been to me. We have achieved and accomplished so much since we first got together nearly five years ago and it's been the best time of my life. Although I feel that this is just the beginning. I look forward to 50 years' time when we're old and grey and look back at what we have achieved together. I look forward to watching our children grow up and forge a life of their own. I look forward to doing every day of the rest of my life with you. I knew pretty early on that you were the girl I wanted to marry. You're my soulmate, my best friend, my one true love. Today I love you so much, but tomorrow I promise I will love you more. You mean the absolute world to me, and I would be lost without you. I'm so proud to be your husband, and I'm so proud to call you my wife. Words can't describe how beautiful you look today. I love you, baby, and I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. I'd now like to welcome up to the mic the wonderful, beautiful bride, Cara and Indy. Indy's got a few words to say. <laughs> Indy, take it away. I think Indy's had a few words to say. That's why I've got her. <laughs> oh. Hey, everyone. <laughs> what a day. My head is absolutely spinning to see all of your faces. All of my favourite people are in the same room at the same time tonight and it is so incredibly special to myself and to Pat too. <laughs> We've had people fly, as Pat mentioned, from all over the place. We've had people come from Melbourne, from all across New South Wales, even from Townsville. Um, and other places, and we just feel so lucky. <laughs> this is going to be a recurring thing. <laughs> we all feel, we both feel so lucky um, that you've gone to such a huge effort for us. Uh, some people in particular um, have had some real battles on their hands lately, um, whether it be for themselves or someone that they love. And I just want to acknowledge that. Um, for a lot of people tonight here, um, being here was important to them and also a challenge to get here and it means the absolute world that you were able to be here for us tonight. So I look around the room tonight and I'm flooded with the most amazing memories. <laughs> They're all coming back to me. I look over here to my left and I'm taken back to the most insane Mexican holiday of my life. <laughs> I see my girls, the ones who lift me up, make me happy and love me, love me always, no matter what. I see my school friends, both from Sydney and from Gympie, and I see a lot of people responsible in this room for some of the worst hangovers of my life. Yes. Francis, I'm looking at you. Greta, you're another one. <laughs> um, I look in front of me just here and I see the Williams family. And I'm instantly transported back to the most beautiful childhood a girl could ask for. It was filled with love and laughter and fun and Nintendo and some of the best parties ever, and the odd melted Tupperware dish. <laughs> I 
I see my grandpa and my auntie and my cousin and I remember how exciting it would be when I would see them in the Blue Mountains, especially at Christmas time. Then I'd look in the front and I'd look at this guy, the one that looks like he swallowed a wombat. <laughs> and I remember clinging to my dad in the big waves at Hathead Beach, feeling safer than anywhere else in my life, despite the fact that we were being dunked over and over again. I remember Sunday mornings, that was the day Dad didn't work, and I would carry a coffee to him in his shed. I wasn't afraid of spilling the coffee. What I was terrified of was breaking his bloody cup. The man has owned one coffee cup for how many years? <laughs> My entire life and then some. <laughs> It scared the Christ out of me dropping this goddamn cup and I've never had to try harder in my life to walk in a straight line, not even when I've been out on the town. (laughs) Anyone who knows my dad that's here tonight won't find the coffee cup a surprise at all. If nothing else, my dad is a man of consistency. I've hardly ever seen him in anything other than stubbies, a blue singlet, or grey track pants and a chequered flannel. (laughs) You're really dressed up tonight. However, the man defies this line that I had previously written. For the last 28 Years, nearly my entire life, and definitely since I could first remember, the man's had a beard. He's always had a beard, and occasionally I'd have a bit of fun and nag him to shave the bloody thing off, and he wouldn't. He never would. Sometimes he'd indulge me like he was thinking about it, but the truth was he never was going to. He walked into a barber's today and had his first shave in nearly three decades. So, thank you, Dad. Dad, it's your consistency I love. You're fun, you're wise, you have a measurable love for Jamie and myself. Or me and Jamie. Uh, Jamie and I. And you always correct me when I say Jamie and I. (laughs) But hard to top the memories I've had with Dad tonight. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. It's hard to talk my memories um, from tonight with Dad, but there is another moment that I want to share with you all, and that's the time, like Pat was telling before, that we pulled out an ultrasound at a little lunch between our four parents and ourselves. And everyone else at the table, yes, they clued on straight away that that was an ultrasound. This one, who I purposely sat next to so I could have a quiet word, looked at me with a stunned look. I looked him in the eyes and I said, Dad, you're going to be a grandfather. That moment and the look on his face is the one thing I will never forget for the rest of my life. (laughs) And thank you for being here. Um, Ten years ago, exactly, you were lying in a hospital bed and I said, you better bloody well stay around to walk me down this aisle. Now you've got to wait around because maybe Jamie will get married one day, so you're not done. (laughs) Speaking of Jamie, (laughs) I absolutely gave him a rough time when we were little and somehow he still loves me. He's become a man I am so incredibly proud of and someone I'm incredibly proud to tell anyone who asks about. I love watching his hard exterior melt away when Indy does something funny. (laughs) He's responsible for some of the most fun I've ever had growing up. Some of the best times were when Mum and I would pile into, and Jamie would pile into a hot Tirana with no air conditioning the day after Boxing Day and drive 12 hours north to Widgee to visit our grandparents. It was bloody hot and it sounds like torture, but it was actually the most incredible adventure, especially trying to sneak puppies and quacking little ducklings into motel rooms. <laughs> We had a st- set of stops along the way and the one that we always planned for was, and was Jamie's favourite and it was to see a certain little friend of his in the middle of nowhere. At this one service station, 
in the middle of nowhere, Jamie would always go and visit this little Staffordshire terrier. And he's... Oh, I'll give it back. <laughs> I'll take it back, Pat. It's fine. <laughs> you broke your arm, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie had a little friend. He was a little Staffordshire ter- terrier. His name was Milo, but Jamie always called him friend. And for years, we would always visit friend. Jamie and I also learnt one other significant life lesson on those trips and this one was courtesy of mum. You never put salt packets into coffee. Even though they look similar, you've got to make sure it's actually sugar. (laughs) (laughs) That life lesson among among countless others was courtesy of mum. She's the sage in our family and by far the scariest when she needs to be. She's been my cheer squad at times, even when I thought I've been defeated, and the voice of reason when I've needed it. The one thing she was particularly good at was adding a touch of whimsy to our lives. Whenever Jamie and I would watch Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory on video, the original version, right at that moment when all the kids walk into the chocolate factory and the lollies are just sprouting out of trees and there's a chocolate river, mum would waltz in with a bowl bowl of chocolates and lollies and I don't know where they came from in the house, she definitely stashed them away, but every time she would bring them in for us to nibble on while we watch the movie. It's the little things. (laughs) Yeah, for mum. And every Easter, when Jamie and Dad would go on a boys' trip to ride motorbikes and watch, watch friends kill stuff, <laughs> Mum and I, would, Mum, Mum would take me to the Easter show, and she'd spoil me all day, not only with show bags, but her undivided attention. <laughs> she has a special way of making you feel loved and confident and instills values without even uttering a single word. Mum, I hope you're proud of the woman that I've become because I'm trying to be like you. It didn't strike me just how much you sacrificed for your children until I had one of my own. And suddenly I see all these acts of love from you that I had never noticed before. Now I know weddings are meant to be about new beginnings and all those things and I've spent more than half my speech talking about the past. But that's perfect if you ask me. You've all made me who I am today and I love you for it. I hope I've done you proud. And Pat, if you have a problem with me, take it up with this lot. (laughs) Also, as you're passing through the room tonight, you will come across some beautiful photos of some loved ones that Pat and I miss every day. They're just over there. Included is my nan, Judy. I feel like she lives on in all the women in my family. She was the most patient woman I've ever met and her affinity with animals is something I already see in her great-granddaughter. She didn't really like the limelight quite this much, though. (laughs) She had this unique way of being. She was intelligent and ladylike, but also tough as nails and a hard physical worker. She taught me diligence and wasn't afraid to show how proud she was of her grandchildren. And I really do wish that she was here today. Another one of those photos is a man I only met a few times, but I felt like I'd known forever, and that's Pat's granddad, Derek. Every time Pat and I would visit him, he'd have a box of chocolates waiting for me, not for Pat. (laughs) Early in our relationship, I remember being at my my, my first big family lunch and feeling a bit nervous. Derek noticed this, looked at me from across the table and winked at me like ev- and just to tell me that everything was going to be all right, and he was right. But in reality, I didn't have much to be nervous about at all. <laughs> Except maybe Indy. <laughs> uh, are you all right, Janet? Indy. From the day I met Jamie and Linda, I instantly felt a part of their family. It was just so easy. I remember shaking in my boots as Pat and I drove in the pouring rain to Shell Harbour for the first time to meet his mum and dad. I was just so desperate to make a good impression. I made sure I was wearing nice clothes, I did my hair so that it looked decent, I had my makeup on, and then I got rained on. So by the time I arrived in Darling, Darley Street, uh, and it was Easter, so it was absolutely freezing in Shell Harbour, 
Um, I was this cold, wet little rat with a, with a runny nose. <laughs> And then Linda got up and made me a hot cup of tea and rescued me just like she's doing now. <laughs> it was a warm and wonderful cup of tea and it just felt like everything was meant to be, and it was. Now, Pat has told you um, of the day we broke the pregnancy news, as I was talking about earlier, um, and by far it was one of the most precious memories of my life. But there is another one I keep tucked away that shows the true beauty of, family, of the family that Pat has. Pat's dad, Jamie, had dropped, just dropped myself, who was heavily pregnant, and Pat back off to Sydney Airport after a visit to Shell Harbour. He'd been quietly excited about the arrival of his first grandchild, and as he was saying goodbye to me, he did the sweetest thing. He looked at my bump and said, may I? And he reached his hand out and touched my belly, and the look in his face was just something I'll never forget. <laughs> The excitement in that man's eyes, I'll just carry it forever. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie and Linda, for making me feel like I'm your fourth child. It means the world to me to feel your love and to have your support, and I couldn't have gotten through the early months of motherhood without you. Now, not many of you know this, but after Pat and I had been going strong for a few months, I was in Melbourne for work, and I decided to make a huge decision. I went on my first ever blind date. But it turns out it was with Pat's sister. <laughs> Lauren, Lauren and I had never met, and Pat insisted that it was the perfect time for us to get to know each other. And let me tell you, to this day, I've never spent more time fussing about the way I look, except for maybe today, <laughs> and what I was going to wear to a dinner. My, I did my hair, I spent forever on my makeup once again, and I stuffed around the mirror for ages. And then, like a creeper, I stalked Lauren's social media so I knew exactly what she looked like and headed to an Italian restaurant to meet her. <laughs> I think we even texted each other, like, what we were wearing in this weird kind of way to make sure that we could know who we were. <laughs> but then, as soon as we met each other, it just felt like we were old friends. Um, Lauren had felt exactly the same as me that day. <laughs> She'd stuffed around with her hair and her clothes and her makeup and she was nervous and she wondered what I looked like. And we both caught up and we downed a bottle of wine and we talked about Pat and I got some good stories and more than anything, I got a sister. My first meeting with Josh... <laughs> it's coming. Where is he? There he is. Wasn't quite so enthralling. <laughs> I think he gave me a quick hi from across his, kitch uh, his parents' kitchen before he taking himself and his hangover back to his bedroom. <laughs> I never thought that one day he'd be the person stepping up when Pat couldn't to drive me and my newborn to doctor's appointments and to keep me sane via coffee and company. Josh, the amount of time you devote to our family is incredible and so appreciated. And I'm so excited that Indy has an uncle just like you to love her and to play with her and to teach her all the naughty things that Pat and I never will. <laughs> My transition into the Molten tribe sounds natural and easy, like it was always meant to be, and it was. But there was one person I really had to win over, because as you see, I was not Pat's first love. <laughs> now, I've told you how nervous I was to meet Jamie and Linda and to meet Lauren, but there was nothing compared to the first time I met Annie Allison, Uncle Steve, and their three boys, Caden, Nathan, and in particular, Jesse. <laughs> Jesse was Pat's biggest fan in the entire world and I had serious concern for the longevity of our relationship if I'd blown the meeting with Jesse for the first time. <laughs> to say I was living in fear was an understatement. Caden and Nathan were lovely to me, um, but no one was good enough for Jesse's pato. I can confidently say that Alison and Linda saved mine and Pat's relationship back then by sweet talking and bribing and somehow convincing Jesse um, that all was okay and that I could stay. And now he's my mate too. And I love him and I love all of you boys. Thanks for saving our relationship, Ali. <laughs> so Pat's gone through the story of how we met and given a certain bridesmaid her credit for introducing us. So I thought I'd tell you about another master in our lives. 
the day I convinced Pat that we needed not one, but two dogs in our lives. Pat and I have this awesome relationship where I dream bigger than big, and then Pat reminds me that we're not rich or magic, and he forces me to become a rational human being. But the day I got a yes for bringing home Rosie and Lucy, our two little dogs, was pretty impressive if I do say so myself. (laughs) However, the day we decided we wanted to become parents watch wasn't such a huge ask for Pat. He'd been waiting to be a dad since I'd met him. There are a number of things about Patty I noticed almost right away, maybe after the second date. (laughs) But his love of family was one of my favourite if not my favourite. The way he would talk about his young cousins and his granddad and his parents was just beautiful. But Pat's not a man of only words. His actions speak louder than anything. It's the time he spends with the people that he loves and the fact that when you are with him, you are his only focus. And that, to me, makes him just such an amazing catch. I don't think I've ever seen a father more smitten with his little girl she is, she is in his entire world and nothing is too much to ask if it's for her or for me. Pat's the one who brings the calm and stability and the clean clothes to our home <laughs> and he is the unjudgmental support when I'm losing my mind. <laughs> the day he proposed to me on the story bridge was super romantic, a proposal of epic proportions and one to tell the grandkids about. But then he told me the reason he actually picked the story bridge. He picked it not as much for the grandeur of what it represented, or rather, or he, ooh, he, he picked it not as much for the grandeur as what it represented for him. It was overlooking the city that he moved to, where he knew no one, the city where we had met, the city where we had brought, bought our first home and the city where we had, were going to become parents. To Pat, he didn't choose the story bridge because he thought he could sweep me off my feet. He chose it to ground us both in the life we had made together. Planning this wedding has been hectic, but also fun, and knowing I got to marry Pat at the end of it has made me all the more eager to just get it done. But there were some interesting moments while we were planning the wedding. For instance, when Pat gave me his list of guests, I wondered whether he hit his head. It started off fine. Mum, yep, Dad, yep, Lauren, yep, Josh, yep. And it just got weird. Gaspo, Fruity, Sucky, Rolsey, Smitty, Rabs. Mate, these aren't even words. <laughs> but it turns out that it's just code for a really good bunch of mates. <laughs> Another interesting wedding planning moment was when I tried to convince Pat that it was, it was a good idea to let our little dogs, Rosie and Lucy, come. He said no, and I nagged. And he said no, and I nagged. And he said no, and then, to much, of, much to Pat's credit, I gave up. Uh-uh. Patty, I got one over you. You know why? Because there's a street dog in our wedding party. <laughs> Uh, but there are, there's another oddly named friends of Pat, friend of Pat's who's currently working overseas. Whoop. And I wish he could have been there today to join Pat and his fabulous three groomsmen at the altar. So, Patty, Moose and I have a little surprise for you. speech on behalf of everyone that couldn't make it today. Um, some had family commitments, some tied up with work, 
another locked up in prior engagements. <laughs> um, so I've been fortunate enough, or so I'm fortunate enough to know Paddy from a very young age. Um, it was two, year two at Shiloh Primary School. Um, as we know, Paddy was pretty sport orientated, pretty much good, pretty good at whatever he did. So I did whatever other guy with no talent would do and just velcro myself to the cool sporty guy just so I could have some mates. Now, me and Paddy were pretty cool growing up. We spent pretty much every weekend together, either playing backyard cricket, front yard footy, or the momentous day when the pool showed up at the multiple residents. Uh, pool footy was started and pretty much took over our lives. I don't reckon any of these games we played ever finished without a blow up. If it wasn't Paddy and Bluey going toe to toe, or me and Jack Paddy could try to get one over it on each other or Mitch King getting bashed literally every time he stepped in <laughs> We had some pretty huge lull times. When Pat turned 18, it all started going downhill at a rapid rate. We all knew we loved a sneaky beer at our house party, but the moment he was allowed into Shaw Harbour Pub, he took it to his full advantage. This is a brief time when Fat Pat was around. <laughs> I'll be honest. A lot of things that have happened on nights out here that can't be mentioned, can't be remembered, or by legal reasons can't be spoken about. Isn't that right, Ellis? There are some I can say about. It was 2010. We, were, we flew down on a box day morning to watch the ashes at the MCG. We were all pretty tired to start with. Um, we got all the beers and Ended up at the casino, to the nightclubs, it was a huge day, huge night, everyone was blind. We were meant to be going to cricket at 10 a.m. the next day. And as we all woke up, some messages started coming through to see where everyone was. And then we got up from Pat's roommate. Pat's pissed the fucking bed. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what to do. From this day, he was known as Pissy Pear Molten. <laughs> leaving. Um, it, was, it was the best thing he's ever done. Uh, by far the be best decision he's ever made. And we certainly wouldn't be here today if he didn't make that move. To Jamie and Linda, today you get to see your favourite son. Uh, the boys, pains in the ass. They weren't even reasonable. They were tough, tough growing up. But all I can say is thank God for Lauren. <laughs> Paddy, I'm absolutely heartbroken. I can't be there today, mate, to celebrate you and Cara tied the knot. Uh, but I know what the perfect day it's going to be into a very, very large night. Finally, to Cara, thank you for seeing the other side of Pat. Uh, there are very, 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 very few people who've seen. Thank you for looking after him. Thank you for having the perfect little girl with him. And thank you for steering Paddy in the right direction. We had to travel a long way. He had to travel a long way to find his little slots of perfection, and I'm glad he did. I hope everyone has an amazing night. Um, I'm thinking of you. I wish you guys there, um, but I'm now off to smash some dumplings. See you guys. <laughs> Is this gonna work? Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Sarah. That video was not gonna come off without her expertise and her last-minute run to JB High Five about an hour before we got married. <laughs> so thank you, mate. That. Thank you. Now, before I sit down, I want to say the biggest of thank yous to our bridal party, you sexy beasts. <laughs> We're so lucky to have you all in our lives, and I thank you for making today and the lead up to our wedding so special. You guys are incredible, like the way you've treated us, the love and care you've shown for us over the last few weeks and months, and especially today is just immense, and we really appreciate it. Thank you to um, Nathan, Caden and Jesse, Lauren and Chico and Emily for your readings today. Having you part of our ceremony has meant the world. 
thank you to the master of wit and banter, our MC Josh. <laughs> the Adonis. <laughs> it is, isn't actually easy preparing to be an MC, but as we predicted, you absolutely slayed it. <laughs> Thank you for putting so much effort in for us. We really do, really appreciate it. Um, to Sarah Archer, um, no one would know this yet, but Sarah had to learn two songs um, in order to be here tonight. Um, she didn't have to do it. Um, she did it out of the kindness of her heart. Um, and the first song that you heard um, earlier tonight when I walked down the aisle was a lullaby that we play for Indy on the regular um, and it's not a popular song and Sarah still learnt it so that she could sing it for us. So thank you so much. <laughs> Kimmy, mate, this girl's responsible for this. <laughs> So thank you so much for making me feel beautiful. Kimmy, when I um, got in contact with you to do my makeup, I was telling you earlier, um, she's a super talented woman for what she does. But there was an additional layer to that, and it was that I needed your spirit there today beside me while we got ready, and it paid off in spades. Thank you so much. Also, please save plenty of room for dessert. We have a stunning wedding cake that's been made by Megan McKinnon. Thank you for you all to enjoy. I had originally written um, how much we really appreciate how much um, talent and time that you gave to us today, um, but you really did. So thank you so much. And finally, to my beautiful husband, you're the reason my world is so bright. You are the reason my, our little family makes, sorry, and our little family makes our home the most wonderful place in the entire world. I love you. Jamie and Linda, I promise to take care of your boy. And Pat, I promise to do everything I can to make our future a happy one together. So here's to my husband. <laughs> <laughs> and here's to love and to all of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I 
Y no te deja quieta, nena ¿Quién puede parar eso que al bailar de 